Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com or TheClinicalTrials.guru, right? I'm very proud that I picked up that domain name uh, a couple years ago, actually. I've not been using it. It's great to put on the back of my business cards and things like that. It's just a lot easier and shorter. But anyways, I'm going off on a tangent, and I'm doing that because I've been so busy these days. I mean... Yesterday I had that one hour webinar, that got me so many emails from you guys, so many questions, it's really hard to keep up with them, but I'm going to do them all, and you should all hear back from me, one way or another, whether it's through a video, or whether it's just me typing an email, or a quick text, I've been getting a lot of text too, at 949-415-6256, and a lot of emails at dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com, so send your questions, I'll keep you anonymous, unless you don't want me to, find you on every social network, you know the drill, let's get right into this question, okay, it says, hey, I had a few uh, questions regarding PI compensation, so they have like four questions, and I'll get through them right now, so number one, when you contract a PI on a percentage, will it be from gross or profit of the entire study, and will it be based on the amount paid per patient or on the total budget? So it's gross, right? You can't you can't pay them just from your profit, right? It's well, you can. I should never say can't to anything, but it, I've never done it. And most people, when they pay PI as a percentage, it's a percentage of gross because the, the profit, the expenses that you're paying for is your profit. The PI shouldn't have to worry about that, all right? That's not that's not in their control. Now, if they're a business owner, totally different, right? It's after profit. But if they're just a contractor or an employee, it's a percentage of gross revenue, okay? And to get to your part B of that question, is this gross revenue percentage uh, based off of the amount of payment received per patient or on the total budget? Amount received, okay, so the easiest way to go about this is each time you get a check. So give the PI a copy of your budget, right? On the top, right, you're gonna get 8% or 10% or whatever of every single check that we receive, right? And they can, they can audit your books if they want, they can look at all the checks you've received I've never been asked this before, but I'm prepared in case they are. When you get a check from that study, you make a copy of this check, you cut your check to them based on a percentage of what that check is, and you give them the check and the copy of the check you received. With Usually it's itemized, meaning what visits they paid for, so that they can get a good idea of what it is. If they have a 10% hold back on it and sponsor or CRO only paid you um, 90% of what you're supposed to receive, the PI only gets X percentage, whatever you negotiated, of that check. He'll get, or she, will get the hold back percentage, their relative percentage to that hold back, when the site receives the payment from that hold back. Very simple. You get a check from a sponsor, make a copy, Calculate the percentage you owe your PI, write the check, give them both the copy and the check. Boom. Um, that's the way I do it, and that eliminates any confusion or disagreements on, hey, shouldn't I be getting paid for the entire budget? No, because if we agreed to enroll 10 subjects and we enrolled zero, guess what? We're not paying you for that, right? So, question two, our site is already established. What will be the best offer to a PI's base salary on percentage? So percentage and then salary are two separate things. You can try to do both. Um, I always tell sites, leverage what you can. And by the way, I'm helping sites now, but if there's PI's out there, I'll help you as well. Like we can reverse engineer this whole thing. But I'm a site owner. This question's from a site owner. So I'm helping them, but if the tables were turned and I was helping a client who was a PI, I would use this information and reverse engineer it. So basically, the best way to pay a PI from a site is paying them a percentage up to a certain point. 
all right? And you've got to find that magic number. If you have 20 studies all high and rolling, you don't want to pay that PI percentage. That's a lot of money, all right? Even 10% of all that is a lot of money. It may make more sense for you at that point to put them on a salary, and they might prefer that, um, a fixed stipend right like eight thousand a month we had once one of my sites we were pretty busy and instead of paying a percentage to the PI and we knew that we can afford this and we knew in the long run it's gonna be a lot cheaper it may hurt cash flow short term but in the long run it helps us tremendously with our profit we pay the PI eight thousand a month rather than any percentage right but when you first start you may want to just pay them a percentage rather than uh, a fixed salary because you need help with the cash flow. So if you're an established site, you may want to look at, hey, is the PI willing to, for very minimal work, uh, are they okay with like $2,000 a month, $3,000 a month, and then you don't have to worry about percentages, and guess what, all that that you're saving is going to be profits for you later on. So that's what I would do. I recommend 10% if you're going to do the percentage for a PI. That's a good number. And it gives you room because they're probably going to come back with 15 and then you can settle in on 12 uh, if they negotiate with you. All right. Uh, question three, when reimbursing a PI for service, do you pay anything extra for PI oversight? No. All right. That's simple. You either get a percentage or you get a salary or you get some kind of combination of the two that I just discussed, all right? Question four, when conducting a phase one study, how would you compensate a PI? My concern is that uh, overhead and employees needed for a phase one study are double when comparing with late phase. Do you think salary will be best? Yes, and I, I think that the PI, for a lot of these phase one studies, the PI doesn't necessarily have to be there overnight, all right? You can, they can delegate. There's something called a delegation of duties log that's there for a reason, right? They know PIs are not machines, they're not robots. We're not there yet. We're getting there, Google's helping. Um, but we're like 50 years away from maybe a PI being a robot. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves now. So there's a delegation of duties log for a reason because the PI is not a machine and they can delegate qualified people. They could be MDs, oftentimes they're physician assistants, oftentimes they're nurse practitioners, Oftentimes they're registered nurses. You work out what you're gonna pay them for the overnight stay. So you need like shifts. You need a day shift and a night shift, just like any hospital will do. All right. So the PI doesn't necessarily have to be there 24/7, 365. Um, that's how most phase one sites do it. You can pay for an MD. Maybe there's an MD. Um, and these phase one studies usually compensate you very well. So you may be able to afford hiring an MD just for overnight staying there. Um, if, if the protocol requires that, and every protocol is different, some protocols are okay with a registered nurse or a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner being on site. Um, if you absolutely need an MD, you need to find one. Maybe the PI has a colleague and they can discuss with them and say, hey, can you do the night shifts every now and then? You may need a couple because I doubt any MD is gonna wanna spend every single night overnight. So you gotta have to work it out with each protocol, but no, your PI does not need to be there 24-7, 365, just because you're doing a phase one study. And compensation shouldn't matter, because you're either doing salary or percentage or some combination of the two. Has no, it doesn't matter whether you're doing phase one study or phase four studies, same principle, all right? And this is just my, again, this is just my strategy there could be other ones, there could be better ones, there probably are better ones, but this is mine, this is what's worked for me, and I know it's worked for other sites, right? Hopefully this helps, thank you very much for your questions, I'll try to do like one more today. Dan from the clinicaltrialsguru.com, keep your questions coming in, and thank you.